Hey Mets fans, Pepsi invites you to show up at Shea on Fridays for free admission to the Pepsi picnic area. The first 600 fans with a Pepsi can or bottle will be admitted to the Pepsi picnic area at Shea Stadium for free. Have a great night with your friends and family and enjoy the game from the left field bleachers. The Friday night action continues on April 24th as the Mets take on the Cincinnati Reds. So bring a Pepsi and show up at Shea for free. Friday, June 26th, not included. And now it's time for our AFLAC trivia question. Which pitcher has the most major league innings without throwing a wild pitch? Mm. Yeah, we're going to give you that answer later on. I've seen the answer, so I won't. Okay, as Brian McRae, it's a fly ball left field. Henry Rodriguez makes the grab. One down. Now let's go downstairs to an overworked gentleman, Matt Lachlan. Second baseman, Carlos Mayerda. Well, Pete Flynn was the man of the hour, the man of the day. He and his ground crew. And Pete, congratulations on a marvelous job. What was your big concern with this AL-NL doubleheader? Well, the big thing was the weather. And then it turned out to be a very nice day, and everything went great. Everything went well and so far things going well for the Mets as New York tries to have a sweep today. Uh, was it harder than usual because uh, the early start in American League team in? Not really. We just the finished up at three and we had an hour for to get everything ready for the Mets and we had them out at four so everything went great. And the good news. Good job. Everybody did a good job and I guess the good news is a little extra change in the pocket a little overtime for you and the fellas. Did uh, George contribute to the pay. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll track that down because the fellas do deserve some extra pay for the hard work they did, fellas. All right, Matty, it's one and one now on Carlos Baerga. One man gone here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two nothing Mets. Swung on and foul tipped into services glove one and two. I just, I just think the Frank, I didn't mean to step on you there, but Carlos just seems to be pulling off the ball. He can't cover the outside part of the plate. Uh, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I haven't been or seen him enough on an everyday basis. He's open in his stance. Line oh, drive, base hit in center field. That will help. A lot of a slump mental. Whenever you go in a slump, you're always you're always out in front. And we're going to see this the this base hit again. The ball's on the outer half of the plate, and he stayed in that time and got. Good staying level. He always has the level swing. But whenever you slump, you're always out in front. And when you, you work to go the other way in batting practice, and then you get in the game, you work and you work and you work, and it doesn't. It's one time you get up to the plate and you hit the ball in the outside corner, the, the, the opposite field, the way you should, and that feeling comes back, and you usually go right into a tear. So hopefully that will happen with Carlos. So Bayerga in first base, one man down. The batter Tim Spear, who was hit by a pitch his first time up. Bottom of the fourth inning, two zip. The Mets on top of the Cubs. Steve Trackle's pitch down low, 1 0 on Tim Spear. Trackle, a guy who has outstanding split finger pitch. They taught him this year a sinker. He wasn't sinking the fastball. He's given up a lot of home runs. He's not a hard thrower. Like you can see it on TV. You can tell on TV whether a guy's throwing hard or not. So if he's got a straight fastball and he's throwing around 89 miles, 88, 88, 89 miles an hour, he's got to get a little sink to it. Inside, 2-0. and oh. A lot of the pitchers with the Cubs now feature the split finger pitch because Phil Regan's a believer in it. He will not tell a pitcher he has to throw it, but he will encourage a pitcher to develop that pitch. Well, I hate the pitch. I mean, <laughs> when Bruce Sutter came up, that's all he threw. You can look for it, you know, but as it progressed, then you got guys who started putting it in their repertoire. The fastball, curve, slider, split finger was another weapon. You know, at least with Bruce Sutter, as great as a split finger it was, that it was, and the best one I've ever seen that with along with Mike Scott he threw it every pitch so you can look for it. 2 0 pitch and spear fouls it back so it's two and one on the mid catcher. But when they're throwing you mixing in fastball curveball slider and they got a split finger as an off speed pitch I mean then that's murder. There's Phil Regan the pitching coach with the Cubs and Phil also would load the ball up when he was a pitcher. I asked him. Would he teach a pitcher how to load the ball up? He said no because of the split finger. Okay. And has the same, it is, it's the same type of pitch. The 
Bayerga leading off first base, being held on by Mark Grace. Remember, yeah. remember Gaylord with his puff ball when I he caught him. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Bayerga. Spear fouls the ball back, so it's two and two. I never understood that. He put all that rosin on his hand, and he throw the ball, and make the he had so much rosin on it, It'd be a puff of smoke after he threw it. But it never, <laughs> it, it never distracted me. Maybe it distracted other people, but I remember when he was with the Padres in the latter part of his career that there'd be this big puff of smoke come out of his hand after he threw the ball, and it just, it just, my concentration was so much on the ball, it never bothered me. Gaylord was tough. One of the great competitors. Don't Never make an error behind him. Oh, he made some infielders very uncomfortable. 2 2 pitch down low, so it's 3 and 2 on Tim Spear. Well, they ran him 2 and 2, the pitch be prior to this one. They can, they certainly can run him 3 and 2 now. 2 nothing ball game. Cookie Rojas flashing signs. Stay out of a double play. And I'll stick my foot in my mouth and get the pitcher up so the leadoff hitter can lead off next inning. Even though the pitcher <laughs> hit a two run home run, huh? Right. Well, I think he'll pitch him a little more respectfully. This is bad. Well, was leaning the wrong way. But he got back. Same two teams go at it tomorrow afternoon. Well, oh, he was on his way. And that's a situation where you don't you don't, you know, you don't want to get picked off. You can't get picked off. You get the manager very mad at you. Three two pitch by Erga running and Spear once again fouls it off. Bobby Valentine scratching his head. That's off to a good start here in 98. Was a sign. Bobby scratching his head because Cookie's flashing signs. I think in this situation right here, at least in all the teams I played for, you got a 3-2 run sign. It's on until they take it off. There goes Bayerga. The pitch fouled off down the left field line. So we do it again with a full count on Tim Spear. It's been quite a day at Shea Stadium this afternoon. The Yankees playing here at Shea and Darryl Strawberry with a home run in that ball game. Boy, they did a great job out here at Shea Stadium. There's Carlos. He got the quick steps, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> quick choppy steps. And he checked Carlos because of his speed. One man out. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two nothing. The Mets on top of the Cubs. Second game of a three game series. The finale tomorrow afternoon. Fox Sports New York will give you all the action. Foul off again. So if you're Carlos Bianca right here, you don't want this to happen in August in Cincinnati or Atlanta when it's in like 95 degrees. If and you've already played 100 games. More importantly, if you're Scott Service, you don't want that to happen again. <laughs> yes. Believe you me. can relate to that. I oh. can't relate to that. That, hurt. that doesn't hurt, oh, does it? Right up underneath. That doesn't hurt. Oh. That hurts all the ways up here. Rub some dirt in it, man. <laughs> you rub some dirt in it. Yeah, right. <laughs> that does hurt. Now you definitely send the runner. That's a soft spot. It certainly there. is. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. Not to be specific, but you're better off getting hit straight ahead with the foul tip, not underneath. <laughs> but that's a different show. It's three and two on Tim Spear. Scott Service gently flashing the signs. They checked by <laughs> Eric at first. Gingerly. Oh. Carlos has been getting his running it. He's been on the move. Yeah, four. Fastball away. Eric is on the move. Fastball is thrown in. Service. Has a shot and makes the grab. Two down. That'll bring to the plate a home run hitter, Keith. Yes, Rick Reed. And here he is again in his second inning home run. First pitch, fastball belt high down the middle. 
And that's a line drive over the 358 sign and nice home run trot too. I like that. <laughs> well, with two men out, Rick Reed is the batter. Carlos Baerga is still on first base. That's with a two nothing lead. <laughs> Carlos is exhausted. Running from first to second base on a lot of foul balls. Misses outside to Reed, 1 and 0. He wasn't going to miss over the middle this time. Big right hander getting the signs from Scott Service. Down and in, 2 and 0. That's that new pitch. Baxel's been working on that. Sinker trying to get a sink in his fastball. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you're not an overpowering pitcher and you throw the straight fastball and you make a mistake, you're going to get hurt. Sinker, you might get it under the bat, get the ground ball, particularly to a right hand hitter. Still Regan, the pitching coach of the Cubs, looking on. Rick Reed now has worked the count to 3 and 0. I, I think he'll be taking it. <laughs> I think we'll get the take sign. Let's not get carried away here. He looks very determined. He said, I can hit another one. 3 0 pitch. Fastball for a strike, 3 and 1. See if he takes here. Here comes Cookie. Rick Reed will be aggressive with a 3 and 1 count. And he took it. Taken again. Three and two. And that's your pitcher. I agree with that. He's three and two, just as nice a pitch to hit as, as three and one. He's not going to throw him a breaking ball and take, a, and take a chance on walking him with, with a hot Ardonias up next. There goes Baerga. Three two pitch inside. He walks Rick Reed. The Mets now have runners on first and second for Ray Ordonias. <laughs> well, I knew he was going to pitch him a little more respectfully, but um, that's a cardinal sin right there. And it's a good idea that Scott Service, the veteran catcher he is, to go out there and calm the pitcher down, talk to him a little bit, and say, hey, forget about it. Get this hitter. This is the hitter you got to get now. Forget that at bat. You know, we just had a shot at John Olerud enjoying the walk to Rick Reed, getting a kick out of it. John Olerud very impressed the way Ray Ordonius is swinging the bat right now. Well, he's been hot. He's got a hit today. He's extended his hitting streak to 11 games. Single to right field his first time up. Bottom of the fourth inning, two outs, and Ordonius takes the split finger, but it's kind of a hanger. It, hanged, it hung up there, uh, not the spot where he wanted it. Looked like Ray just wanted to take a pitch. So it's 0 and 1 on Ordonius. Steve Traxel and the Cubs trailing the Mets to zip as Ordonius fouls it off. Boy, this kid just all he has to do is hit 250, and he's going to play every single event of every single game. You know, even if he hits 220, if he hit 50 or 60, 55, 60 RBIs out of him, mm -hmm. it's a plus. It's a plus. Runners on first and second. Reed on first base. Carlos Baerga on second. 0 and 2 on the Mets shortstop. Breaking ball misses outside, and they had a shot at Rick Reed at first base as Gray started in. You know, the National, the one year I played in the American League, uh, comparing the umpires, the American, the American League, this is a check swing here, as you can see, and that's a close one. That could have gone the other way. The National League umpires, when they ask for help on a called third strike, very rarely ring you up. Over in the American League, it's like an automatic they ring you up. They just strike three. Forget it. Might as well walk to the bench. Gary Darling, first base umpire. And a one-two pitch to Ordonia's breaking ball misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. After tomorrow afternoon's game, the Mets will head to Cincinnati for three against the Reds. Then back home for a homestand. 
This is the critical pitch right here in the at bat because if you miss here you go three and two with runners running. Do you want to walk him with a left hand hitter. Coming up next and a good left hand hitter this is a critical pitch. Two two pitch fastball is fouled off. Into the crowd not a play. There's Matt hoping to get up with runners on first and third preferably. Because then a run would be in with a base hit. Well, Matt has a hit already in this ball game. He hit a hard line drive in the right field. And he also lined out his first time up. So he's got his timing tonight. The same situation here, two and two. This is a very important pitch for the pitcher. Nice play by service. Three and two to Ray Ordonez. I just don't agree with going to your, your, your third best pitch in a crucial pitch sequence. Now the runners are running. You're throwing your a very difficult pitch to get over the plate. A split finger. Uh, I can see throwing a breaking ball in that situation. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, it's his <laughs> choice out there. Now he's behind the eight ball here. This is a nice pitch to hit. Has to throw a strike. Three and two on Ordonez. Runners on first and second. Ordonez hits a fly ball to right field. Sosa camps under it. Makes the grab for round number three. So the Mets three and two here in the bottom of the fourth. They fail to score as we go to the fifth inning. It's two zip Mets. Stadium from our rooftop camera, and we're back to our Aflac trivia question. Which pitcher has the most major league innings without throwing a wild pitch? Mr. Hernandez? I know the answer, so oh, I was wrong. <laughs> oh, were you? I was tricked. What'd I you thought think it was, was uh, the reliever for Baltimore Hall. What his name was his first name? The big tall Dick Hall. Dick Hall. No, it's, it's Rick I guess he Reed. Really? Well, how about that? You know, you. I'm not me, perfect. You fit. You're kidding. <laughs> Hall had one wild pitch. Now, while we have a quick moment here, you know, uh, most famous situation comedy is closing its door. I guess maybe the curtain's coming down and the Seinfeld show. Tell us what you oh, know about it. Well, I can. I had to sign so many documents. I, I, I feel if I tell any of anything about the plot, I'll, it'll be arrested for a felony. We'll give you we literally dollars. had to sign three pieces of paper. Can we pay saying, you off? Well, you pay for my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff Blauser steps in to face Rick Reed. And he hits the ball hard in left field. So Blauser picking up his first hit of the ball game, he's one for two. Third baseman, Kevin Horry. There's a hanging breaking ball here. Did not want to get it on the inner half of the plate, I guarantee you. He wanted to get it away. Bowser last year he hit 17 home runs as a member of the Atlanta Braves. Good solid player. Does a nice job defensively. And he's on first base, the batter Kevin Ori. Who has been struggling? Struck out his first time up. He takes a strike, but the Cubs are very high in him. In fact, Ron Santo told me he's he thinks this kid's gonna be a real good offensive and defensive third base. He's an all-around player. The, the defense is easy. If you're a good fielder, you're a good fielder. It's just whether if he if he completes the package, he becomes the hitter they think he's gonna be. Blauser leading off first. And the 0 1 pitch. Fouled off. 0 and 2 on Kevin Ori. He'll be followed by Scott Service. So he gets ahead of him 0 and 2 with a fastball away and then a fastball running inside. It's always important to watch Fran, too, and you know you've caught how pitchers pitch when they're in pressure situations. This is a close ball game, 2 0, leadoff single. Uh, you want to keep the goose eggs up there. I always. Always watched very carefully how pitchers threw when they were in trouble. Because some could be like uh, night and day. They get they get in trouble. They're not the same pitcher. 0 and 2 on Ori. Fastball, base hit in the left field. So the Cubs have runners on first and second here in the top of the fifth, and nobody out. This is an this is an 0-2 fastball. And we'll see where the catcher set up in and he gets it over the middle. So it's not where he wanted to get. You see the catcher reach over the middle. Probably a time to if you miss 0 and 2 you miss inside. But if it was that easy everybody would be playing baseball. Well, Rick 
Reed now will take on Scott Service. The book on Reed in the American League was when he got in trouble, you didn't have time to get the bullpen up. The opposition would take advantage of it. Service will step in to take on Rick Reed. Runners on first and second and nobody out. Sinker for a strike. 0 and 1. How about the pitching comparison between the starters and the relievers? The relievers have been terrific this year so far for the Mets. And they can bring, they have depth. The, the key word throughout the winter months when Steve Phillips and Bobby Valentine were wheeling and dealing, they wanted depth in the bullpen. They got it. Breaking ball down low, one and one. Well, that's what they went out to do. There's no question that was what they needed to improve on in the bullpen. And that's been kind of the Achilles heel of this club now for the last couple of years. And you've got to be real happy when you see that 1.79 ERA up there. And the fact that Mel Rojas is throwing so well. Runners on first and second with nobody out. And Bobby Valentine, of course, likes to bring in a lot of different players during the course of the game. Service hits a fly ball center field. McCray, easy play. One down. We're talking about bullpens. The Seattle Mariners. <laughs> I tell you, it can't be all physical. Well, tell There's got to be a lot of mental. They're coming in there with gallons of gasoline in their back pocket. They're just putting fire, adding gas to the gas to the fire. And that's nothing's more demoralizing to a club too when you lose late and you've scored runs, and it demoralizes not only your everyday players, it demoralizes your starting pitchers too. Base fired the pitching coach, brought in Stan Williams as the new pitching coach. Steve Traxel, the batter. Sacrifice his first time up. This is another bunt situation here. I mean, Matt Franco should be playing in a lot closer. That's it. And Chet Blauser at second base. I mean, they've got to bunt here. They're not going to let this pitcher hit. I and mean, I could be wrong, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say, okay, fine, but this is a bunt situation. You're down two runs, get the runners to second and third. You're going to be real aggressive. Matt Franco is playing so deep. I mean, there's nothing to fool here. I mean, if you want to creep in, fine. He's not in enough. And Traxel punts the ball out in front of the plate. They go to third. Got him. Nice play, Tim Spear. And Matt Franco tagging the base, getting the force. Two down. Well, I hope he didn't get hurt there. I'd like to see the angle of how in the heck he guy slid into him like that so hard. I mean, the third baseman becomes the third baseman becomes like a first baseman here. You you, you stretch Center fielder, right, right. towards the throw. Not a good bunt in front of home plate. Nice play by Tim. Heads up. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's sliding out of the baseline there. I mean, he's he's within his rights. He took that's, them out. That's just good. That's good. That's good. Tough baseball. I don't know. Chase Cam. That's a hard nosed play right there. He's not he's not out of the baseline. I just don't think it's necessary for him to go clobber him like that. You don't see that very often. No, at third I've base. never I've never seen that. Mm -mm. And that could be here's here's the angle we need right here. I mean he is out of the he's not out of the baseline. He just well that's good baseball. That's I'm a, just glad he didn't hurt his knee. That's a slide into second base that took place at third base. Exactly. Franco had no chance to get the runner at first. But that's a clean play. Jeff was well within his rights to slide like that. That's a good hard nosed play. Matt's going to get that play and get the heck, get your feet out as soon as possible. You'll learn a lesson right there. Well, runners are still on first and second. Two men are gone. The batter, Brent Brown, he's 0 for 2. He popped out and he lined out. Going inside and back out over the plate for a strike. Know, this inning right here is the first inning, Fran. I've noticed that Rick is throwing his fastball like he always does, but he's missed the corners. He's starting to get a little bit over the middle of the plate. And as, as someone can see that from the bench, the pitching coach or the catcher, say, hey, look, you're missing on your fastball. Now, when I call inside, I want it inside. You're getting it over the middle. Let's go. Co concentrate. Up high, one and one. Communication is so important. And um, when you have a, a veteran catcher like we had with Gary Carter, who had such, I think, 
didn't get enough credit uh, for the job and the game that he called with our great pitching staff. It was a great pitching staff, but we had, I thought, the, the, the best catcher in the National League uh, and calling balls and strikes. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. 1-2. and two. Were you surprised Gary didn't get in the Hall of Fame first ballot? Well, there's always that whatever it is. You never vote a guy in on the first, on the first ballot. Um, I, I would be very surprised if he's not voted in next year. Well, he's Bob one of the all-time great catchers. Let's go. Please. Yeah, give, me a, give me a break. Terrific career. Talking about Gary Carter. But right now, Rick Reed has a one and two count on Brant Brown. Runners on first and second. Mets two. Cubbies nothing. And Brown takes outside. So it's now two and two. That was almost like a waste pitch. Will change up sinking away. This the game that Tim calls. He's probably going to come inside. He's got to move his coconut here. <laughs> That's it. Come on. He's coming back in now. Get it in there. That's it. Beautiful. If you're going to miss, miss in. Three and two now. There's some overhead. Even if you miss inside, it serves a purpose. That's an alarm bell for a hitter right there. You get him thinking inside. Mookie Wilson moving the outfielders around. It's, and they check the runner at second base. Ori back. One thing about Bobby Valentine's Mets, he has them using all their pickoff plays. He stays on this ball club day in and day out about fundamentals. A lot of managers talk fundamentals in spring training. You never hear about it again the rest of the year. Bobby looking at 3 2 count. Outside ball four. So Brown walks. And the Cubs have the bases loaded here in the top of the fifth inning. With two men down and the batter, Mickey Morandini, a contact hitter. He's a kind of a typically like a slap hitter, uh, not great power goes got to shade him around the left field you can see the outfield right now they've got him shaded to left field and you saw the runners Ori in third Traxel on second Brown on first Mickey Morandini the batter A big at bat for the Cubs second baseman they trail by two right on the corner that's a nasty pitch you can see how that you can see the setup here I'd like to see Ordonez a little more over in the hole and I'd like to see Carlos a little more up the middle and move Olerud, Olerud uh, John over into the hole more and really play him over to that side. The 0 1 pitch. Round ball is short. Ordonius to Bayerga. They go for the force. That'll do it for the Cubs. They strand three. Fail to score after four and a half. Mets have the lead and we'll be back. Well, back here at Shea Stadium, 2-0, the Mets on top of the Cubs. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Starting to get a little chilly up here. We turn the heater back on. <laughs> I'm starting to get cold. <laughs> all, you do, all you do is complain. <laughs> Matt Franco will lead it off. Franco hit the ball hard tonight. He's hit the ball hard twice. He's had a line drive to third baseman, his first at bat. Tough luck out and a bullet to right field. Well, he had a super year last year, swinging the bat coming off the bench. One of the most difficult things to do in baseball is to swing that bat as a pinch hitter. And he's one for two. He hits his chopper to second base. Morandini to Grace. One down. Morandini just threw it to Grace. We're going to throw it downstairs to Matt Lockman. Matty? Well, Fran, as we know, the Yankees played here this afternoon. Christopher Backtack is here with his three-year-old son, Alex. Now, Christopher, you have a Mets warm-up and a Mets cap on. How come Alex, at three years of age, has a Yankees cap on? Well, you know, I've been trying to find a, a Mets hat this size for Alex, but they don't make him yet, so he's out of luck. So when he grows up and they can, you can find a hat that'll fit him, he's going to be a Mets fan. That'll be the day, yeah. All right, so a seed has been planted for an idea in the concession stand. Make a little bit of a smaller cap, and Alex will wear the Mets colors all year long, boys. All right, Matt, as Bernard Gilkey takes a strike, it's 0-1 on the Met left fielder. He's 0 for 2 in tonight's game. Whoa, what a play by Steve Traxel. Nice, quick hands. Taking a base hit away from Bernard Gilkey. Well, Bernard's first two at bats, he's kind of first pulled off the ball. John got, he got into last year. 
And this one he stays right in on a fastball away and hits it just like he should. And you come up empty. It's, sometimes this game's not fair. They say they even out. As you, we, we watch that through our chase cam. Do you uh, think they even out? Not for good hitters. <laughs> The 220 hitter. Hey, easy. Don't, be, don't <laughs> be getting that 220 hitter. As Olerud takes the strike. 0 and 1. Seen John Olerud this year employing a different way of holding runners on first base. He's been swinging a hot bat. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Change up, gets him out in front. You don't see John Olerud fool that often. Well, if you're going to get fooled, you're going to get fooled on a split finger. And that was a split finger right there. And he took a little bit off of it. You don't fool disciplined hitters too often, and John certainly is a disciplined hitter. Oh, and two on Olerud. Outside, one and two. He hit 363 back in 93. That year, he tied an American League record intentional passes. He holds the record with Ted Williams, 33 in one year. That's a surprising stat to me. Swung out and missed, so Olerud goes down. The Mets go quietly here in the fifth. Three up, three down. We've played five here at Shea, and it's two nothing Mets. With three. Sosa fouls the ball down the right field line and out of play. It's another case here where they've been wanting to throw Sosa pretty much they've thrown him pretty much outside the whole game. So it's obvious that is their game plan to pitch Sammy away. But again I get a little bit concerned when Rick starts missing over the middle a little bit with his fastball. Sosa one for two in his game. The old one pitches down low one and one. Funny when a, a hard thrower misses out over the plate you're not as concerned. Correct. You got a Bob Gibson or a Tom Seaver. But when you got uh, pitchers out there that aren't overpowering and they've got to stay in the corners, it's something you got to watch for. Sosa pulls the ball foul. Sosa has a rigorous program during the winter months working out. Here's the pitch count here for Rich Reed. Uh, Rick Reed threw uh, five innings. And he's filling a lot of strikes, 75 pitches, and you got to be very pleased with that. It's around 14 pitches an inning. That'll keep you strong for the season. One and two now on Sosa. He wants time. I always wanted to know about a pitch count of a pitcher friend late in the game, sixth inning on, if was particularly as the season progressed and your arms get tired and it's hot. And you've thrown a lot of pitches and you know they might be tiring out there. One two pitch. Fastball up high. You know, Keith, with a guy like Sammy Sosa, he strikes out a lot. You know he's a good fastball hitter. So you wonder when you get ahead in the count, why not make him see if he'll chase that bad breaking ball? Or the or a splitter. Um, whatever pitch you have that that breaks down and in the dirt. You don't want a leadoff walk here, that's for sure. So Reed misses inside with the fastball. He's you know, he got the first great three innings. He's been a little bit laboring. He's pitches himself out of the uh, he's pitched himself out of a couple jams. Well, you mentioned but it. he's just kind of lost a little bit of a rhythm. And there's the Bob Apodaca. I'm sure he's watching him very carefully. Don't forget the depth of the bullpen. He jammed Sosa with the ball. It looked like it was out of the strike zone. Easy play for Olerud. One down. Well, Fox Sports News prime time covers you comes First your way tonight. It's following Mets baseball on Fox Sports New York. You will get Fox Sports on Fox Sports New York. Have you seen that? Uh, no, I haven't. It's outstanding. You got to rush home and take a look at that. Get all the scores and the highlights throughout the country. You don't want to stop by Lanes afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we got a day game tomorrow. We better not. <laughs> we better missed. get our rest. <laughs> Lanes, an outstanding restaurant in New York. Keith has his mail sent right there. Oh, right. 0-1 to Mark Grace. Inside, one ball and one strike. One 
and one on the cup first baseman who pulls the ball to the right side base hit. One of the better hitters in the National League especially since 1990. Keith. Well he's one of the best hitters period from the first day he put a Chicago Cub uniform on. And here you see there we go. Mark now has 1406. You see Paul Molitor on top on top no no fooling Tony Gwynn right behind. Rafael Palmero turned into a great player. I'm sure the Cubs wish they still had him. But then again you had two first basemen here. Uh, they traded him to make room for Mark Grace. Those are the most hits since 1990 in major leagues. Of course Tony Quinn approaching 3000 for his career. Ground ball second base by Irga. Gets the lead runner. Nice play by Carlos Baerga. Two down. Aggressive play. And the right play. You have to get the force out here. Even though the ball's hit. It's a chopper not hit sharply. The fact that the runner had to stop let the ball go in front of him. You know you got to play easily. You can see that right in front of you. So really it's a no brainer. How about the stretch by Ordonez? Well Ray does everything correctly at shortstop doesn't he? Yes he does. With two men down now Jeff Lowes with the batter. It's kind of interesting friend they pitched Rodriguez who hit a home run away off of uh, Rick in Chicago. They first at bat they pitched him all inside. Got him called strike three. The last two at bats they thrown him sinkers away and he's pulled the ball to the right side of the infield. 1 0 pitch ground ball to short. They should do it. They go second to the force. Cubs go down. They strand a runner here in the top of the sixth inning. That's the story here at Shea. Rick Reed gives a 2 0 lead. And we'll be back. It's the great Jeep event. And great deals on your favorite Jeep vehicles are showing up wherever you look. Like a low $319 a month lease rate on the rugged Go Anywhere Grand Cherokee Laredo. Or choose 1.9% financing. And check out our latest 4x4 of the year, Grand Cherokee 5.9 Limited. The landscape will never be the same during the great Jeep event. Brought to you by the most award-winning brand of 4x4s on earth. Check out this 319 lease at your dealer. Q104, Q. the 10 in a row classic rock station. 10 in a row or $10,000. Q104. With everything this city has to offer, New Yorkers are used to getting the best, which probably explains this. The 190 horsepower Nissan Maxima. With sports car handling and comfortable seating for five, it's New York's best-selling V6 sedan. Lease the Maxima for $2.99 a month for 39 months. Initial payment $14.99. Ends April 30th. I believe in clutch hits. Show up at Shea on Saturday, May 2nd, and get a free Dunkin' Donuts travel mug. You gotta love this mug. Be here when the Mets battle the Colorado Rockies. For tickets, call 718-507-TIXX. That's 718-507-TIXX. Show up at Shea for Dunkin' Donuts Mug Day. Well, New York Mets baseball is brought to you in part by OmniPoint. 100% digital, 0% hassle. No hassle so far here at Shea Stadium for the Mets as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning and Butch Husky will lead it off. Husky one for two. He has a single in his ball game. Takes the splitter for a strike. This has been a well pitched game. Well we got two control pitchers out there that know how to pitch. I mean Traxel's thrown so far he's thrown 81 pitches 49 are strikes and 30 are balls down low one and one through the first five which is throwing more pitches but still that's that's well done. I just would like to see uh, Butch stay in a little more he's pulling off there just pitching him away 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 I mean just go up the middle. Even his base hit to right field was not a pretty swing. No, he stuck his, his, his uh, fanny out a little bit and reached <laughs> out and got it. 
but he did hit the ball at the and bat. The, and the last at bat, he did the same thing. He hit the weak ground ball to first base. They seen that they're setting up outside. He missed the curve. He missed a hanger right there. He sure did. But his swings this year are a lot better than last year. Well, he's always a slow starter. He's a big guy, and you know I never like to play in April neither. It's cold and damp, and I always liked this. baseball is a warm weather sport. There's the swing. See, he's kind of stepping in the bucket. It's almost like he's on his heels. He's stepping in the bucket too. He's just to try to step more into the ball. Up high. And he's just not taking even though he didn't take that pitch very good. I mean, he's very vulnerable outside right now with the way he's throwing out his front shoulder there with the way the Met logo is. I mean, he'll make the adjustment. I'm sure Tom will get on him about it too. I'm sure he's very much aware of it. Breaking ball missed outside three and two. The coaching staff with the Mets are very good instructors. They are, and it's, I think Bobby has got people there that are that way, or like him. They're dedicated, and like I said, I just was so impressed with the two spring trains ago when I was there at the, the, the import on fundamentals. Swung out and missed that split finger. It was a hanger. He missed it. Now the controversy of the week is brought to you by Nam National Arbitration and Mediation. The most timely cost effective way to settle your legal disputes and that certainly is the controversy of the week in baseball Yankee Stadium. Oh boy oh boy. What's going to happen to Yankee Stadium. Look what it did to that seat. You see the picture in the paper of the four people that had those seats for that game that night. Yeah it's really unbelievable. You know I mean who's going to be comfortable going back into that ballpark. Brian McRae just took a ball. That's a good point. Good point. There was also another great controversy in that Nick loss in Miami the other night. It was clearly a, a Nick scored with, with a before the clock ran out and they were overruled by the referees. It's two and all now on Brian McRae. Well the, the, the league had a rule in the Heat's favor. It was a judgment call. If they didn't they'd have to go back and look at an awful lot of ball games as McRae takes up high three. No it's unfortunate for the Knicks. Because that's seventh and eighth playoff spot. Well, the eighth one means you got to go to Chicago and play the Bulls, that's and right. they lost last night to the Wizards, so they could very well open up the playoffs in Chicago. Three but and zero on Brian McCray. Anyway, all roads lead to Chicago in the NBA. Anyway, well, eventually you're going to have to right. play Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go see Dr. Jordan. There's a strike. Three and one. On Brian McCray. McCray lined out and flied out. Traxel doing nice job tonight for the Cubs as McCray takes up high and walks. Now let's take a look at our Jeep Eagle game summary as Phil Regan calls the bullpen. Here we go, Rick Reed. Of course, the two run home run in the second, which gives us the score of the game. The Met lead. He's thrown six innings. Shutout ball, two strikeouts, two walks. Ray Ardonez extending his hitting streak to 11 games. And the Mets have three shutouts this season and are shooting for their fourth. Rick Reed has been in control tonight. Phil Regan, the pitching coach with the Cubs, standing behind manager Jim Regalman. Good time that steal here, or hit and run. Craig and run. Erica chases the ball out of the strike zone, pops it up. Should be an easy play for Blouser, and it is. Two down. I would give right now an opportunity. I would give a green light to um, Brian at first base because if he's thrown out, you got the eight hitter leading off. If he steals, you got the eight hitter coming up, and the manager has to make a decision whether to walk him or not to hit face the pitcher. If he does choose to walk him and he gets out of the inning, at least you've got top of the order coming up to coming up next inning in the seventh. So I would give him every opportunity right now to steal it. Try to steal it. We'll watch McCray leading off first base, being held on by Mark Grace with two out here in the bottom of the sixth, and they check him. Now it's up to Spear to give him a pitch to run. Well, get a good jump. Traxel's not real quick going home from his from his uh, break from his belt. But this is just a steal situation here. 
and they're pretty hip to it over there too. You mentioned that belt. The first pitcher I've ever seen go to the set position chest high was Jim Palmer. Now a okay. lot more, a lot more pitchers do that. And Scott Service flashes signs. Get the tape wrapped around his fingers so the pitcher can see his fingers. There's a curveball for a strike. 0 and 1. You know, as a hitter too, when you've got a fast guy on base. Uh, you do tend to get number one. The fastball is more often. Right. I know that Lou Brock told me when I first broke in that Johnny Bench, late in his career, well, latter part of his career, was reputation of throwing runners out. He said, Keith, if I'm on base, Johnny puts down number one. And I go up there looking for that dead red. <laughs> All in one. Curveball misses inside. Now, also, there's another school of thought. When you're a catcher, you don't want to show the pitchers you're going to rely on number one with the runner on base. So sometimes you call a pitch like a curveball or a changeup just to show the pitching staff that you won't go to the fastball with the runner on first. Traxel has that split finger, has trouble keeping it out of the dirt. Well, split fingers, I think you should pitch a, a hitter the way you'd normally. Pitch him, even though you have a fast runner on base. You just, but Johnny Bench was Johnny Bench. You got a young pitcher out there. They're going to shake. They're going to shake off Johnny Bench. You better have a good I, fastball. I don't think so. <laughs> they check it with Cray, with Johnny Bench, one of the greatest catchers of all time. A lot of signs flashing out there. Catcher to pitcher. How about? Shortstop to second base. And you've always got to communicate. I always had the second baseman let me know in a left hand hitter if there was an off, off speed pitch being thrown. I'd play more pull. 1 1 pitch. Fastball swung out and missed. 1 and 2. You got him behind the count now. I'd let him run. If he gets thrown out, he gets thrown out. Rojas in a very relaxed fashion, flashing signs. One and two on Tim Spear. Mets two, Cubs nothing in the sixth. They check McCray. Well, the Cubs are definitely on their toes. Steve Traskell's on his toes. He's aware that this is a steel situation. He's thrown over there around five or six times. Round. Traxel misses outside. Two balls and two strikes. Mark Pachata warming up in the Cub bullpen. Late in the game when the Cubs have a lead, you would see Rod Beck as their short man. McCray holds his ground. Spear hits a fly ball deep right field. Sosa going back. Under the warning track, making the grab for on number three. So the Mets strand a runner, fail to score. We played six here at Shea. It's been all Mets and Rick Reed with a two, two nothing. The Mets on top of the Cubs. Fran Ely with Keith Hernandez and Howie Roy's Howie Rose sliding oh. back into oh. the ball. Oh, you well, got the left-hander part that's right. right. That's about it. That's right. <laughs> Howie was talking about Seinfeld before. He said that Keith Hernandez would tell us how the show turns out. Well, I can't do that, like I said earlier. All I can tell you that it's extremely funny. Tell us. Well, I, had, I had right You want to break the poor guy? He signed the paper. That's okay. I was disappointed I didn't have a scene of kissing Elaine again. Easy, I, was, easy. I was hoping that I'd have that scene. Oh, but uh, that's a giveaway right there. You had but some funny things run through your mind last time you did that. She's not interested in me. I told her I quit smoking, and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> did you have your moving uh, company yeah, duds right. on again? Though? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Keith Hernandez, ladies and gentlemen, America's mover. <laughs> Rick Reed's been moving and shaking for the Mets tonight. He's got the two run a homer. He also has the 2 nothing lead, and he gets a ground ball from Kevin Ori. Alfonso throws him out. One down here in the seventh. Matt Lachlan is standing by with breaking news. Well, Howie, uh, about an inning or so ago, we talked with Christopher and Alex Backtack, and Christopher mentioned that Alex is a Mets fan, but he couldn't find a Mets cap, and so that's why he had the Yankee cap. Well, Mets organization heard, and they wanted everybody to know that, yes, indeed, there are children's sizes available in the brand-new Mets cap, and so, Christopher, the Mets would like you to have that for your son, Alex, and the question is, what happens to the Yankee cap. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, we'll see who gets into the postseason, all right? And whoever's in there gets to wear the hat on Alex, okay? Hopefully the Mets will get it the postseason this year, though. Right. 
All right, well, the Mets are hoping to make it to the postseason. Alex is kind of partial right now, but we know he's a Mets fan, and that Mets cap's going to look pretty sharp in just a little bit, fellas. Boy, that's gratitude. They just gave him two brand-new caps. And a line drive by service goes foul. I bet he puts that cap on before this game is over. He did. There you go. There it is. And the Mets merchandise catalog has all sorts of things aside from just caps. 1-800-331-METS. M-E-T-S, the number to call to find out everything they've got in there. And there's a lot of new stuff this year. Scott Service with what looks like a harmless fly ball. Gray gobbles it up. Two quick outs here in the seventh. Well, Keith, the pitch count seems to be more important as we get deeper into the ball game with the starting pitchers remaining in the game, although one starting pitcher is out of the game. Well, this is good. This is good that he has a uh, a breather inning, so to speak. He can get one, two, three here. The last two innings have struggled. And a nice hand for the former Met, Lance Johnson, who has not started lately because he's been nursing a hip flexor. Johnson did not start last week at Wrigley Field when the Mets were there, and then the Cubs went to Montreal, and they were wary of playing him on the artificial turf there, the hard surface. So here's Lance Johnson as a pinch hitter. The Cubs feel they have their best ball club out there when Lance is playing every day. Well, he's a veteran player. He can hit. He, uh, capable, very capable in center field. Doesn't walk a lot for a, for a leadoff hitter. And he pops this one up. Let's see if there's room for Alfonso. There is. Nice play. Eduardo Alfonso. Johnson is retired. And a one, two, three inning for Rick Reed. Seventh inning stretch time here at Shea. And the Mets still with a two-run lead. At Nobody Beats the Wiz, the sound of spring breaks are more price breaks. Sony's 8mm camcorder with color viewfinder breaks the $500 price barrier. Nobody Beats the Wiz gives you another lucky break. Minolta's Sightseer 35 to 70 millimeter zoom camera shatters the $100 barrier. And Sanyo's Hi-Fi VCR is just $147.77. Right now, spring breaks mean price breaks at Nobody Beats the Wiz. How long does it take to turn the new Dodge Durango from the sport utility with the most passenger room in its class into the one with the most cargo room? Not long enough. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. Deposit. Yeah. Uh, do you think I could get a few more of those tube thingies? Want to win a million dollars? Play the Monopoly game at McDonald's. Just buy large or supersized fries and it could be yours. Who gives you great prizes and America's favorite fries? Did somebody say McDonald's? What do you mean I jammed it? So what do you want with your fries?